Okay, hear me out. Something I complain actually pretty often about is that we don't have enough KD apps or they're not good enough or they're not consistent in design enough and so on. I do think that KD core applications like Dolphin, Gwenview, Ocular, Kate and so on are absolutely incredible and would win against any competition on any day. But I don't quite feel the same way on apps that are about some smaller use cases or not as maintained. From that point of view, I absolutely loved Gnome's initiative, which is called the circle, which manages to onboard a lot and I mean a lot of little cute applications that are consistent with their design. I have praised this system in previous videos too, though, so this shouldn't come as a surprise. However, Plasma Mobile and Kurigami are changing that, and it's not just changing it for mobile phones but for desktops as well. When designing with a phone in mind, developers realized that many applications had to be rewritten from scratch or straight up written from scratch, simply because there was no alternative that was working well on a mobile phone. That was obviously done in Kurigami, which is KDE's toolkit that best supports, I think, touchscreens, which is totally a big deal on smartphones, you know. However, Kurigami is designed for convergency. It won't make apps automatically convergent. There are some great desktop-only Kurigami apps and some great mobile-only ones too, but it will make your life very easy if you decide to make your mobile application a desktop one as well. So now we're getting lots and lots of originally thought for mobile, but you know what, this works very well on desktop 2 applications. In fact, most Plasma mobile applications now are published in the KDE Gear updates just like any other application. So when is the next KDE Gear update for these applications? Well, it's this month, so it's on the 20th. However, through the monthly blog post of Plasma Mobile developers in March, we can get a little bit of a preview on how these applications have been improved for the release. And let me tell you, it's a juicy update. So without further ado, and I mean it's only been like 383 words, let's start talking about what's new. So AudioTube. AudioTube is KDE's client for YouTube Music. It allows you to listen to music ad-free from YouTube Music, just like if you were paying for it, which I do, by the way. In March, there has been a complete redesign of the Play queue. On desktop, it will appear in a nice blurry sidebar with options to clear the queue or mix it up. And the biggest surprise for me is that in the mobile phone version of the application, it looks awesome. So, I mean, just look at this piece of drawer. It's beautiful for so many reasons. You have the nice shadow on the dialogue, but also an even nicer shadow underneath the album art. You have this grayish heather area that just looks slightly skeuomorphic. It's just so pretty. It does sadly raise some concerns due to my consistency goal head. In fact, we did already have a drawer that pops from the bottom. So what was wrong with that one? Why was a new one designed? Is it a consistent component that multiple apps can use? Will this one replace the old one? And so on. Luckily enough, the consistency goal was replaced with a new goal last October. So I can happily ignore all of those questions and just say, hey, it looks beautiful. <laughs> If you aren't sold on how pretty AudioTube is, and if so, what is wrong with you, you can check out this screenshot which showcases the fact that now AudioTube current song, album art and artist will be correctly picked up by the desktop and displayed in a widget in the system tree or wherever you want. A lot of features were also added and it's not just design changes, and I do mean a lot. Now you can clear the current playlist, clear the search history, there's an about page, you have your favorite songs and more split songs as playlists. It's much lighter on the RAM, you can share songs, you can create your own playlists and so on. It's a lot of things which I did not expect, expect to all happen in just a month. Phonebook. This is a contact application and I won't talk much about it given that this one is probably much more on the mobile phone side of things. But I do want to point out that the big redesigns happened here as well and this application is also using the bottom drawer that I mentioned above, which makes me think that it's indeed some sort of re reusable component. Arianna. If you follow my channel, you know about Ariana. Actually, you should know about at least two different Arianas. This one 
and uh, this one, Arianna, the KD application, is a project that I started working some months ago with the idea to have a NIPAB reader for e-ink devices such as the PyNote. After a bit, Carl Schwann basically took over and managed to implement lots of new features that would have taken me years. Now there's even more contributors to the application. What's new and cool in March is now Ariana works on Windows and will probably soon land in the Microsoft Store. Given that EPUB readers on Windows are kinda meh, there's hope that Ariana will be used on that operating system too. And as you know, as soon as you start using free and open source software, after applications, it's only a matter of time before you fully convert to Linux. Also, Ariana is getting quite future-proof by now compiling with Qt6, which will come with like KD Plasma 6 as well on all of your desktops. I do have a couple of announcements before I go on, and it's big changes for my channel. Well, firstly, I reached 15,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. To give back, from now on, all of my videos will be available as blog posts as well, and I mean literally word per word. If you just prefer to read, you can click in the first link in the video description or go to blog.nico.law. Also, all of my videos will now have manually written English subtitles, and each one will have chapter marks. All of this actually takes effort and money, so I started adding some benefits for patrons as well, such as private kind of podcasts, blog posts, and polls. Thank you so much to all the people helping me out with the channel. My goal is 700 bucks each month, and it's not easy, but if you can chip in something, that would be lovely. Otherwise, don't worry, it's still lovely. Tokodon. Tokodon is a Mastodon client. Just a few months ago, I actually tried out on Plasma Mobile, but sadly it could not fit my use case perfectly back then because it lacked a major feature that it now has, being able to create polls. But of course, it doesn't stop there. The view to compose messages has been redesigned too to make sure that you can see the post that you're replying to. You have settings to filter out certain types of notifications, so to be fully honest, on all of my devices, I'm always in do not disturb mode. And finally, there's also support for follow requests. Now, I gotta say that in English, this S at the end of the word, it's always so difficult to pronounce. You can see all of the people who would like to digitally stalk you, and you can just go through the list and click on deny on every single one, except, of course, if it's me, Plasma2. Well, you can't have a YouTube Music KD client without obviously also having a YouTube KD client, and that's PlasmaTube. And you guessed it, this client was also redesigned. Now the thumbnails have rounded corners, similarly to how YouTube itself does it, and the media player has a completely new look that you can see in these screenshots. I really appreciate the fact that the person who did the redesign, Mathis Bruchert, clearly how not you pronounce it, sorry about that, decided to use one of my videos to showcase the feature. NeoChat. This is the Matrix client of KD. By the way, all KD uh, communication happens on the Matrix servers of KD, and sometimes it's bridged to Telegram as well. And this makes this client immediately quite important for KD developers. In the latest round of changes, we have that all the status updates, people joining the room, people changing their usernames, and so on, automatically gets aggregated together, which makes navigating rooms much easier. On other Matrix clients, sometimes I have an entire screen just of this status changes. There's a new command to send a knock event to another room, which I just love as an idea. And as KD is work on working on accessibility, keyboards navigation was also improved significantly. There is no longer an hamburger menu, but a more simple plus icon with just a couple of actions like creating a new room or starting a chat. The video controls of the video sent on Matrix now have more options like a volume slider. You can copy images to the clip there are quick formatting options when you select text in the message that you're writing and finally the account switcher now has context menu with more options about accounts. This is a lot of stuff and I know that you might not be directly interested in new chat after all not everybody uses Matrix but remember that if anybody works on another chat application all of this progress can be applied to that chat application as well so it's making it a future proof even on other type of clients.
power plan. Finally, to showcase just how good Kirigami is at making well-designed applications, let me talk about a project that has been posted publicly six hours ago at the time of recording. It's obviously still in the early development stages and such, but look at these screenshots. Like, come on, this application is meant to help you at not killing your plants, which is a pretty tough goal, but it does so in a way that just makes me go, wow. <laughs> And yeah, this application was created yesterday. Like the day before yesterday, this didn't exist. And now it exists. I think Kitty apps have a bright future, you know? Oh, I forgot about the lights. Lights.